twelfth Sunday after Pentecost. The twelfth Lord's Day after Pentecost. The lesson is taken from the Book of Moral Reflections on Job, written by Pope St. Gregory the Great. Some there are who are careless concerning their true life, greedy of the things which pass away, but as to the things which are eternal, either understand them not, or, understanding them, holding them to be but of little moment. They feel no sorrow, nor know how to take wise advice. And, in forgetfulness of the heavenly possessions which they have lost, they deem themselves, alas, poor wretches, happy in their goods. They lift not up their eyes to the light of truth for which they were created. No keen desire ever maketh them to cast a longing look toward the everlasting fatherland. Leaving alone the chief end for which they were made, they fix their affections upon the exile which they are enduring, instead of upon their home, and make merry in the blindness which they are suffering, as though it were glorious daylight. But, on the other hand, the understandings of the elect, while they apprehend the things which pass away, perceive them to be indeed nothings, and work towards grasping the true end to which they were created, and since nothing outside God satisfieth them, their thought, wearied by the intensity of speculation, findeth rest in the hope for, and the contemplation of, their Maker. They are fain to take their place among the citizens above, and each one of them although still placed in the world as concerns his body, doth yet in heart and mind ascend above the world. They bemoan the hardships of the exile which they are enduring, and rouse themselves by the constant pricking of their love, to look to their fatherland above. When therefore such an one seeth with grief that by sin he hath lost an eternal inheritance, he findeth this healthy counsel, to reckon but lightly the things of time through which he is passing, and as the riper groweth his wise course that he hath chosen, to let be these perishing things, the deeper groweth his sorrow that he hath not yet attained unto the things which endure. We must also realize that they who are headlong in their courses, feel not sorrow of heart. They that live without thought, who leave themselves recklessly to the guidance of events, escape the weariness of thought. He that ordereth his life by prudent consideration, looketh carefully around him before each thing that he doth, and, like a man, that before advancing on an uncertain way, trieth the ground with his foot, so he taketh thought beforehand lest some sudden and evil thing should happen to him. He considereth whether that which he hath a mind to do is not forbidden to him by caution, whether he be not too hasty about things which were better put off to another season, lest evil should overcome him by open attack upon his loss, or even good undo him by the inbringing of vain glory. Amen. The lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. In illo tempore. At the time. Jesus said unto his disciples, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And so on. Homily by the Venerable Bede, Priest at Jaro. Blessed were the eyes not of scribes and Pharisees, which saw but the body of the Lord, but those eyes, eyes blessed indeed, which were able to see those things whereof it is written. Thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Blessed are the eyes of those little ones unto whom it seemeth good in the eyes of the Son to reveal himself and the Father also. Abraham rejoiced to see the day of Christ. And he saw it, and was glad, Isaiah and Micah, and many among the prophets, saw the glory of the Lord, wherefore also they be called seers, but all they beheld it and hailed it afar off, seeing but as through a glass darkly. Otherwise were the apostles, who saw the Lord face to face, eating with him, and learning from him by asking whatsoever they listed. For them there was no need to be taught by angels, or the shifting fabric of visions. They whom Luke doth call prophets and kings, Matthew and Amethyst prophets and righteous men. Righteous men are indeed mighty kings, who know how to lord it over their own rebellious temptations, instead of falling under them to become their slaves. And, behold, a certain lawyer stood up, and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This lawyer, who stood up to ask the Lord a tempting question touching eternal life, took the subject of his asking, as I think, from the words which the Lord had just uttered, when he said, Rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. But his attempt was a proof of the truth of that which the Lord immediately added. 
I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Amen. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Potter, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.